Good morning, everybody. Happy August 18th. Uh, my name is Jordan Eller, and I'm one of the three community services managers here at Alta California Regional Center. Is everything okay with our interpreters? Give it just one second here, folks, just one second. Oh, okay. Um, so as I was saying that I'm one of the three community services managers, um, also hosting with me today is Michelle Duchenne. Good morning, Michelle. And Miss Helen Neary. Uh, John Decker is traveling today for work, so he will return to Coffee with Community Services next Friday. And I just want to make sure that I have Helen as a co-host. All right. So as usual, we'll kind of give some hellos and good mornings to some of our, our folks that we have on here, our community services staff. So you guys know who we are. I see Miss Marty Easton. Uh, good morning, Marty. She is going to be giving an update with Helen on just our transportation and the broker and some of things of that nature today. So good morning, Marty. Good morning, Scott Barr. Scott Barr is uh, one of our quality assurance um, specialist in our community services unit overseeing adult and residential services. Uh, I also have Miss Dee Dee Peters. Miss Dee Dee Peters is one of our specialized um, developers. She helps with our community resource development plan. I also have Miss Christy Schaefer, who's one of our resource developers for community uh, for community development, and she's going to share information today on social rec grants. And I see uh, Tom and Beverly. Good morning. They're um, within Helen's unit. Good morning to Heidi. Heidi's one of our client services managers up the hill in Grass Valley. Good morning. Good morning to Jennifer Bloom, one of our director of client services. And good morning, Miss Houston. Uh, Camelia is our director of clinical and intake. And let's see, Ms. Heather Hollingworth is our lead community services specialist and within the specialized services and supports unit. She also helps, um, she has the role of acute care coordinator. So Heather helps our case management staff liaison with hospitals. When we have somebody who's ready for discharge who or might be on a protracted hospital stay, right? Sometimes uh, discharges from hospitals can be difficult if we don't have a, a, the right placement for the client. So it really takes a lot of coordinating with the hospitals and, um, and all of our vendors to make sure that those are successful. So Heather helps provide consultation to our case management staff on that. Let's see, and good morning to Ms. Rowena and Carol. They are both adult service managers. Good morning, Leah Mosier and Adriana. Good morning to Jason. He's also the other lead community services specialist in Michelle Duchenne's unit. And we have Ms. Rima, our deaf and hard of hearing specialist. We will have her share the sign of the week once we get to that. And good morning, Kanisha. Kanisha is another one of our adult service managers, as is Veronica. Good morning to Johnny Jean. Uh, uh, welcome back from paternity leave, right? And um, he is one of our ad ad associate directors. And good morning to Zach. Zach is John's executive assistant, helping us all keep it organized and together. Happy Friday to you, Zach. All right. So, and we also have Rhonda Phillips, our new housing um, specialist, and Alicia Gauchi, who you guys know, she is our um, HCBS specialist. And now I would like to um, pass the mic over to Michelle Duchenne and then to Helen. They have two new community services staff that they would like to um, introduce today. So I'm going to get some pins going so you guys can see them as well. Uh, Michelle, go ahead. I think my staff is not here today. Okay. Um, thank you, Jordan. So I just spoke with Kylie. She, it's her first copy with community services and Zoom's given her a little bit of an issue. So if she comes on, I definitely will introduce her. Um, she is our growth position. So Kylie Draper will be our new, um, our additional HCBS specialist. Um, and she will be partnering with Alicia. We have some things coming down that we will be sharing with providers. Um, kind of what that looks like, our on-site HCBS assessments, and um, those things will be 
Oh, it's clicking around. Sorry, Jordan. Um, <laughs> Michelle, I am here right now. Oh, there you are. Perfect. I got in. So, so okay, thank I'm you. Welcome, Kylie. If you just want to tell everyone, introduce yourself and tell them a little bit about yourself. And then, um, like I said, we'll be meeting with you. You guys will be meeting with Kylie and Alicia on some further um, meetings and some in-office hours as we move to the next part, which is the on-site HCBS um, reviews. So go ahead, Kylie. Alrighty, well, happy Friday, everyone. Um, my name's Kylie. I just recently got hired on for the HCBS specialist. A little bit about myself. I just recently graduated from Sacramento State with a degree in public health and a concentration in occupational health and safety. So it kind of plays into this position just as like community outreach, and I have a big passion for that. So that's kind of where my interest lies. So I'm really looking forward to working with all of you. Welcome. Thank you, Kylie. Welcome. Thank you. And um, we'll get Helen's new staff introduced next week. All right. So next on our agenda, we're going to have Miss Christy Schaefer give us an update on social rec. So I'm going to once again jiggle around with these pens here and get Miss Schaefer on the main screen. And Christy, I made you a co-host. I don't think you have anything to share on screen, but if you do, you'll be able to. Okay. Well, hi. Good morning. <laughs> I'm so excited to be able to share that we have been participating with nine agencies and programs to provide social recreation to kids. Um, and so some of the people that we've been working with is Able Writers uh, from Family Soup, Acing Autism, we just started working with the Boys and Girls Club, Cameron Park Social Recreation, um, Hypo, We Embrace, and the YMCA. So some different activities that the kids have been able to enjoy have been so uh, with Able Riders, they have therapeutic courses, and the kids have been able to uh, learn how to ride a horse, take care of the horse, and do some different um, responsibilities um, as far as taking care of them. And um, I wanted to read something that a parent had written about their experience, their child's experience. So she said, being involved with Able Riders has been such a benefit to my son. He's become completely comfortable with the process and I can see his skills increasing as he is now able at times to be able to hold the reins and direct the horse to stop and go. He's learning how to communicate with his animal and uh, using words like walk on and whoa, different phrases. <clears throat> and he's making meaningful connections with other students in the program and developing a connection with his horse. And he's encouraged to show the horse some love. And he's learning how to put away the different horse equipment, um, leading his horse out to pasture and to put away the bridle. And this gives him a sense of responsibility. And just moments like that where kids can go out and expose themselves to a, such a large, beautiful animal and learn how to feel comfortable, be with professionals that know how to assist kids with different, um, you know, different complex needs and um, for them to be able to make friends. And then also the families are involved. So there's different families that are around and they're able to connect with each other. And this is a big part of what social recreation is all about. It's about getting out in the community and, you know, expanding all the different things that you can do in life and um, meeting new people. And, you know, the families are also getting connected. And um, I wanted to share just a couple other uh, shorter comments. Um, so acing autism. Um, acing autism is a tennis program. And so kids, they're able to get introduced to tennis and they have um, staff that are working with them one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, also with our programs, 
they are doing community outreach for people that have um, for uh, different languages, different cultures. And um, one of the parents said, we feel we found such a meaningful activity and experience for our child and our family. My child is proud of their tennis achievements. And with family soup, so with family soup, there's family soup able writers and there's family soup uh, which is a plethora of different activities for the kids to enjoy. Uh, but one of the main things is gardening. And I did read some comments about the parents, how they loved to watch their child interact with new friends, learning about, you know, digging into the soil and putting the seeds in. And, you know, and as this process has been going through the summer, watching things grow and, um, one of the things that she says that her it's the morning garden has helped my son immensely. And then they are also talking about how they're making relationships with other families that are there with their children. Um, Hypu is doing after school activities, but I guess they were doing them in the summer, but they're starting a new uh, fall cohort. And one of the kids said, I feel included in the youth circles because everyone in the youth circles welcome each other like family i thought that was such a great that is awesome. great comment mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and i mean we could just go on and on um but and the ymca they have um an aquatics program so kids are learning how to swim and the great thing about all of this is that we are building, we're making connections in the community with existing um, programs and they are, um, they are interested in becoming vendored with Alta Regional Center. And so we are helping them with that process. And, um, and so these will be activities that will be so much more easily available um, to Alta Regional Center kids. So I have so much more to say and there's more to come. And as things, you know, progress, um, like when the fall starts, mm -hmm. um, we'll be able to talk about this a little bit more, but thank you for letting me share. No, absolutely. Today. And it's, and it's, and it's, and that's what, you know, as social workers, that's, what, you know, I loved hearing that social rec was coming back. I think we were all probably many of us were with the regional center when that was taken away due to budgetary reasons and seeing it come back is just as is amazing for our, our clients and our families. And um, hearing those stories is just like you said, Christy, it's really what it's all about. Um, I'd like to take an opportunity to kind of hear from the group. If you guys are seeing successful social rec activities for your clients, whether those are um, reimbursements, right? Or if they're a generic resource, but are, what some of our vendors or even maybe some of our case management staff are seeing in regards to social rec activities, um, or even discussing some um, summer activities, right? Things that you've been able to do to help with community integration for your clients throughout the summer. So um, is there anyone who would like to chat about um, some resources that they might know about or experiences their clients have, have gone through? Is everybody very quiet on this Friday? I know for sure that I think probably hundreds of clients went to the state fair. I know it was hot. I don't know how they, they weathered, but I definitely know that there was folks going out to the state fair. And I heard some success stories from some of our specialized homes on that. All right, you guys, you guys can't be so quiet on me without John Decker. You guys are so much more chatty. Um, let's see. Some of our case management staff. Were you asking about social rec activities that people are doing? Yes, Eric, would you want to you want to give some input on that? What you guys have been doing over at UCP or seeing folks do? Sure. Well, we just, uh, we've finished our camps for the year. So a kid's camp, uh, a family camp and an adult only camp all completed and came back. And we have all sorts of wonderful pictures and stories from that. Um, we have a whole list of things that we do. So I know that this weekend, um, is, um, there's, well, we're doing, we did an artism co-event with artism yesterday, which is an art event for folks. 
I know that we've got rafting this weekend. We're taking a group rafting on the river. Nice. Uh, coming up. Um, and oh, I'm going to forget what the other, I'm, it just, it, it, I, I'm in a different zone other than rec right now. Oh, we, we're doing the Lake Natomas. Uh, we did that. The Lake Natomas um, uh, kayaking and paddle with Sac State. Um, that we've done. Uh, we've had some museum trips coming up. So, uh, are doing have, oh, our ranch, we do a lot of golf. Anybody knows anybody with golfing? We partner with Rancho Cordova and First Day. We do a bunch of golf events that are adaptive uh, with the Rancho Cordova. We got a grant. Well, they got a grant. So, uh, hopefully, eventually, but we've been helping them out for a long time. So, we do a lot of golf and soccer events um, that we do over here for our rec program. That helps. No, oh, it's fantastic. It looks, it sounds like all really exciting opportunities for our folks. What are other vendors seeing in regards to social rec or community integration this summer? I see Miss Janae Ross is on, my friend from Residential World. Janae Ross, did any of your residents enjoy the state fair or have they been having fun community integration this summer? Hi, good morning. Yes, Hi, good morning. I did take one weekend or one Monday, we did take all of our guys and they always have a great time. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Janine, we lost your connection. And it was a great time. Well, good. I'm glad. Sorry, there was a little bit choppy there, but it sounds like you guys got to the state fair and they had a successful trip, which is fantastic. Yes, they had a great time. They had, um, were able to save up some money so they can have a good time there. We took a few vans out and mm -hmm. um, they were all safe and had a great time. So we thank you guys for that opportunity. Oh yeah, e excellent. We're very happy for the partnership with the State Fair that they give those to us for free, which is outstanding. And what about Garrett? Garrett, what are your folks doing in SLS? Oh, might've just went off camera. Looking to see, gonna I'm gonna pick on some more of my my fabulous stakeholder providers here. I'm I'm scanning through. How's Trinity Care SLS? How are you guys doing? Are you guys enjoying some community integration this summer? Has it been too hot? How are you guys doing? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, rolling with the punches, but uh, other than that, you know, everyone's happy and. Uh... Enjoying the summer, okay. of course, you know, with uh, emphasis on uh, hydration and all that. Exactly, right? Keeping folks hydrated and safe out in the heat. That's a very important part of our summer community integration. And I know some of the things that we see too, right, in regards to families submitting uh, social rec requests and us doing reimbursements, we're definitely seeing a lot for swimming skills. Um, and a lot for, um, I think we see quite a bit, right, Michelle, on like Taekwondo and martial arts, right, really trying to help um, teach them boundaries and, um, and coping skills, which is great. Um, but I think those are some of kind of the highlights that I feel like when we're approving O24 is that it's a lot has to do with either a camp or swimming or martial arts. So um, it's always exciting to hear about those opportunities. Um, anything else on, on social rec or community integration, even from our case management staff, if you guys know of any good resources? And that's okay. Um, so next, what I'd like to do is I'd like to have Ms. Rima do our, our sign of the week. So I'm going to set up Ms. Rima to be pinned here so everybody can see her. Excellent. Good morning, Rima. Happy Friday. Did you she lost the interpreter because the, the spotlight disappeared. So hang on. Now oh, I okay. need to make her better. Okay, there we go. Okay, cool. Okay. Better? All right. Thank you. Hey guys, this is Rima. So are you ready? So, so along with the continuing the theme of school, so the sign for ready, ready. Then also fun, the sign for fun. 
半。<laughs> and then singing ASL, so song or to sing, so music, and then to sign it. So it's like you're throwing out punches. Yeah. So music sign. So that's when you're going to sign music in ASL. For Deaf 101, I wanted to um, answer a question. How do people have rhythm in ASL? We do have rhythm and how that works is there's, we rhyme with children to develop skills. So as you know, hearing rhythms and rhyme really depend on your ability to hear the words and to play with words. And that's how they develop language. And ASL children, it's the same, but have a different approach. We focus on their ASL parameters. That is the facial expression, the location of the sign. There's five portions to ASL. So we play with those in sign. And so we will do that repetitively, the same thing that you do with the hearing child to develop language. In the past, we, what well, wasn't done in the deaf community, but now it's become more and more popular and you can see ASL teachers that are now using ASL rhyming and encouraging parents to also be engaged. We can use this with our deaf plus population, a deaf plus adult population, those that have language problems or delays, um, it's easier for them to remember the sign because that rhythm part is a repetitive sign. Cool. That's it. Um, Rima, I also noticed that you had sent out a resource to our case management staff this week regarding a free ASL class for clients and families. Would you yes. be able to speak to that a little bit or maybe put something in the chat if there's a link that would be helpful for folks? I don't have a link, but what I will do is I will give an email address to register. So Placer County. Office of Education, they are providing a free ASL class and that's focused on families, but also is open for anyone, any professionals, people who just want to learn, you're more than welcome to join. It's a great opportunity. Um, it's, a vi it's a virtual sign class. I think it's four weeks. It's online. It's virtual. I will put the email address in for you can register for the class. Excellent. Thank you so much. Oh, and then also, also look to my um, or our Alta's website, our webpage for deaf resources. There's always classes that are added there as well. And I will put the link to that page in chat. Excellent. Thank you so much. Because I think generally they can be quite expensive, the classes can be, right, Rima? So these free opportunities are great for families. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It, the costs vary. Some mm -hmm. are low cost, some are pretty expensive, but the free mm -hmm. ones are very rare. So mm -hmm. take advantage of it. Yeah. Thank you so much. Does anybody have any questions for Rima on either the 101 or, or that free resource? Okay. Well, thank you so much, Ms. Rima. You're welcome. All right. So now I'm going to toggle over to Marty and Helen. Let me get my pen set up as usual here, folks. Just one moment. Make Marty. I'll add a little pen for Marty. All right. Um, so I'll pass the mic to you, Ms. Marty. Well, thank you. Thank you, Jordan. Hi everybody, this is Marty Eason. I'm a transportation coordinator here at Alta Regional. Um, I don't wanna miss any important information, so I'm referring to my notes over here. Uh, so the status, I'm gonna give you the status with on Alta's newly vendored transportation broker, R&D. So um, 
last week on August 9th, I believe that was last week, um, R&D sent a request out to all of our transportation providers requesting their vehicle fleet list and also um, an information sheet with all their vendor information. So once R&D receives all of that information, they will be uploading it to an Alta vendor SharePoint through Microsoft. So for, for the remainder of this month and for next month, R&D will continue meeting individually with each vendor after the information has been received. Um, they can answer additional questions, confirm uh, the vendor's uh, information, and then also when they meet, they'll be reconciling uh, their ACRC POS authorizations. So today uh, on the 18th, today is the due date for these documents to be submitted. Um, I know R&D will be sending out a reminder email. Um, let's see. Oh, they'll be sending out a reminder email to please complete this request. And I do appreciate and R&D appreciates the vendors that have already submitted their information. So thank you for doing that. Um, the due date will be extended. Um, it's really important for um, our transportation vendors to respond and provide the information promptly because it will be uploaded into R&D's GIS system, um, which will be utilized the beginning of October 1st. Um, and that will be the beginning that all new uh, closed transportation referrals, that's going to be the system um, and that's going to be our target date that this will take place. So all this information needs to be in uh, well before that as R&D builds their um, system. Um, on a side note, um, Alta will continue to process uh, public transit TSRs. So R&D will be uh, handling all of the closed transportation TSR requests moving forward in October. Um, next week, um, we will be sending out contract addendums to our transportation providers, uh, adding R&D uh, transportation broker to their contracts, which will begin effective October 1st of this year. Um, R&D will also be providing um, a presentation on Wednesday, August 23rd to our Alta managers and upper management at the Harvard office in Sacramento. And then next month in September, filled with all kinds of <laughs> tasks that we need to complete. So R&D will continue with their information gathering from vendors and their meeting sessions uh, individually with each vendor transportation vendor. Um, for our uh, Alta case management, we will be um, determining a date to begin the new TSR training. And then we also have a um, trans another transportation forum that will be scheduled um, for uh, September 21st. Um, that invite will be coming out soon to all the vendors. And this will be um, an opportunity um, to have additional questions answered. And we'll also be providing, probably most likely at that forum, um, the training for them as they receive the new TSRs. Um, after that, um, I guess there'll be more information to follow as we continue on with this positive change for the regional center. Um, if any transportation vendors out there today, if they, if you still want a um, recording of the, um, the meeting we had um, August 8th, where R&D did their presentation, just if you'd like to put your name in the chat and I can send that to you. And also if you need information on how to send your information out again to R&D, um, the vehicle fleet list and the um, information form, um, I can also send that to you as well, but there will be a follow-up email from R&D, most likely um, sometime today. Um, it'll be the reminder going out. So um, thank you all. That's my update for today. 
Thank you so much, Marty. Lots of good info. I know you guys have been working hard, right? Long time coming. Um, does anybody have questions now? I know they mentioned there'll be a vendor forum coming up uh, next month, but does anybody have any questions for Marty or Helen regarding the information shared today? All right. Well, that means you provided a perfect um, update, Marty, because there's no questions. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate your time, Marty. <clears throat> All right. Whoops. Let's see here. Okay. So I am going to adjust some things here. I think I. Hold on. I think I might have messed up my spotlights. Okay, um, so the next thing that I wanted to go over, just to give folks an update. Um, well, actually, first, Michelle, I know there's one uh, vendor forum coming up with um, with adult type services, if you wanted to let us know about that. Yeah, so we have coming up August 24th, um, which is next Thursday, um, we have the Adult Day and Employment Program Vendor Forum, and I will actually put in the chat. So if you guys have any questions, any topics that you'd like to discuss, um, Gary Castro Cuts, he's actually not in this meeting today, but I will put in his email. So if you guys do have um, any topics you'd like to discuss to get on the agenda, definitely email him. Um, and then coming up, we also have September, September 14th, we have the residential vendor forum. Okay. Um, that one, they both are 10 to noon. Um, and Jason Scantleberry, our lead, will be the main contact for that one. So I'll put those both in the chat for you guys. Thank you so much, Michelle. Um, and then I just wanted to give a little update regarding our community resource development plan. So I'm going to share my screen because um, each year when we develop our community resource development plan, we always have to post it for the public's um, review. So can you guys see my screen right now, the Alta screen? Michelle, are you guys seeing yeah, that the screen? Yes, we see it. Okay, perfect. So um, if you go into the main website, right, and you would go to transparency, and then you'd go into contracts, and then right over here on the right-hand side is our current year. These are all the other years of the individuals that were awarded startup funds and contracts. So looking at this year's, um, hopefully you guys can see that okay. Is the view okay? Um, we did, we were awarded $300,000 for our five bed group push in, which is a group home for uh, persons with special health care needs, right for children. It's the going to be the very first one. So we're very excited about that development. Uh, our lead Heather Hollingworth is helping with that project. And that was awarded to the um, Liberia Home Corp. Um, the second project that we were awarded $75,000, and that is for our um, ASL signing staff pilot registry program, right? We're very excited about that program. It's kind of one of the first of our kind that we've done. And that was awarded to Ex Exmil um, Campos Espinosa and Martha Jemison. And both Dan, Christy Schaefer, and Rima are helping us with that project. So we're very excited to see how that progresses. Um, we also were awarded um, $150,000 for a forensic um, care home, right? It would be a level 4I adult residential facility specializing in supporting clients that either have a history or a current use of in, um, substance use disorders, right? Illicit drug use, um, and that may have criminal justice involvement, right? So these individuals might be um, on a court-ordered diversion plan with the regional center, or maybe they've been found incompetent to stand trial, most likely diversion. Um, so we're really excited um, to bring on a new vendor um, for that, Jono Parlor. Um, he is out of the Bay Area, so he's a new provider to our area. So we're very excited about that. Um, and I also know the fourth project, right, getting the most awards, of course, is the, um, the multi-family um, home project out in Woodland. I know John has shared a lot of that uh, uh, with you guys here at Coffee, but we were awarded $1,850,000 for that. So we're very excited about those 18 units. Um, these multi-family home projects, as we've talked about, can take like three to five years to develop. So 
we'll keep telling you more along the way, but we are very, um, very happy to have that in progress. So I wanted to share that with you. Any questions on that? Um, I think some of my CPP people can probably attest that we hope to hear from the department usually around the fall. I think, right, Didi, we usually hear from the department around the fall, letting us know that it's time for us to start um, to submit our proposed projects for the next fiscal year. So for fiscal year 2023-2024, um, we will, you know, definitely keep all of our stakeholders informed when we're going to be doing our, our public outreach survey to really look at unmet needs and the, the, the needs that our community sees as um, high priority for development for this fiscal year. So we'll always keep you guys apprised of that. And it's always on our, generally on, the information is on our transparency website as well. Any questions on our CRDP contract awards? All right. Um, so the last thing that we have, we might not get all the way to 12 o'clock here today, but one of the things that um, John wanted to make sure that we shared with you, I'm gonna share my screen again, is that um, on ARCA's current event website, right? They send out a little blast. I don't know how many of you guys are signed up for um, their announcements, but ARCA does usually have a, a list of um, local announcements, right? Things that might be going on in the state of California things that are going on with Department of Developmental Services, and then things that are going on federally, right? So it's always just a good resource. So we wanted to bring um, some upcoming events from Department of Developmental Services to your guys' attention. Um, there was the Service Access and Equity Grant Bitter Conference yesterday. I'm not sure if we had any vendors that participated in that. Um, any vendors? Did you guys have anybody participate in that? If so, if you'd like to share how it went. Okay. Um, one of the next event topics that we have is the electronic visit verification office hours, right? And that will be a joint departmental office hours. They are going to have some Friday, August 25th, and then also um, Wednesday, August 30th. Um, let me see something really quick. And then I do have, can you guys see the screen here with the electronic visit verification? Yes, ma'am. Okay, cool. Um, so, right, this kind of really goes over it, and it shows you exactly what hours and topics are coming up. So, um, this week they had um, the topic was new mobile app updates. Um, next week they're looking at EVV and self determination programs. Um, they're going to have a couple of sessions on that uh, next week, and and then on August twenty fifth, that again they're going to do the new mobile app. Um, and then another self-determination. So um, any questions on that? I will be honest, I'm not the biggest expert on um, EVV, but if anybody has questions, I'm happy to try to field those for you guys. Okay. And if you want to find that, right, that's all here on the DDS website. And let me get to my other things here. All right. And um, some of you may have heard about, I'm sure you have the quality incentive programs um, that are going on for our employment, um, our employment opportunities. So um, the, the employment capacity training is happening um, next week, the 21st, and then again on the 29th. Um, I am going to give you guys this link here in the chat. Um, just one second, so that if you guys want to sign up for this, that you can. And like I said, this is from the ARCA's little website, but you can definitely get on DDS's main website. I'm having a problem pasting this over here. Hold on. I'll paste it in a moment. Sorry, I'm having an issue with that. Um, so those are there. And in regards to the two upcoming, right, there was DDS um, directives that went out in July. Not sure if Carly has already shared some of this information, but um, in regards to the employment access incentive payments, right, there is uh, this whole directive that goes over it. 
And so how to receive those payments. If you have um, incentive payment processing, right, there's the information about how to get that done and if you have any questions about that. So that's both for um, employment access and then they are also going to be having the trainings on the employment capacity. So for both of those. Um, and like I said, I will put, if I can, this information, the link in the chat for you, but you can also go to ARCA uh, current events. You could just Google it and that would come right up um, and or the DDS website. Um, you could research uh, quality incentive programs, right? And that should, that should pop right up. Um, but other than that, those were, were most of our updates uh, focusing on, on social rec, um, really in transportation today. Um, if any other members have any comments or questions or topics they'd like to discuss, we do have about 15 minutes if anybody has anything they'd like to talk about. Okay, and if not, I thank you all very much for attending Coffee with Community Services. Like I said, John Decker will be back next week, and um, I hope you guys all have a nice weekend. I think it's supposed to cool off a little bit, so go enjoy those, those summer activities while we can, right? It'll be fall and winter before we know it, so <laughs> have a great day, guys. Thanks, Jordan. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.